Welcome to Youth Diary. Many of our young girls have one or the other kind of gynecological problems. Because of their busy academic schedule and shyness, they are not getting proper advice or treatment. So today we have uh, Dr. Asha Anand with us. Doctor, welcome to our show. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, Doctor, uh, what do you think? What is the commonest problem among uh, youth, uh, young girls? Yeah, in the OPDs, we usually uh, get patients, I mean, young girls who come with their mothers usually, they don't come alone, and they usually complain of irregular periods. I think okay. that's the most common problem they face by young women. Okay. Yeah. I think, uh, Doctor, we do have a few young girls who have got a few uh -huh. serious problems. Okay. Now, let's go on to that. Hi, ma'am. Uh, I have a doubt and um, my friend Minu is carrying now and she is also suffering from hypothyroidism. Uh, will it affect her baby? Okay, the question is about hypothyroidism. hypothyroidism yes, yeah. yes, hypothyroidism means the thyroid gland is functioning subnormally, I mean a little bit less. That is the hormones from okay. the thyroid T3 and T4, they are produced in less amount. So what happens is that if a woman is suffering from hypothyroidism, mm -hmm. Um, her thyroid hormone level will be low. Okay. So for the developing fetus, the, f the fetal thyroid gland will be functioning by only about 12 weeks. Okay. So um, there is a deficiency of uh, thyroid hormone for the baby as well, developing baby as well. So it is very important uh, for the developing fetal brain to have adequate amount of thyroid hormones. So it will definitely affect the baby okay. intellectually and also it can, uh, if it, the thyroid hormone level, if it is very low, that is, over, you call it overt hypothyroidism okay. and if it is overt hypothyroidism, definitely you need to take treatment and the effects that are caused by overt hypothyroidism are, that is, growth retardation, cataract and um, definitely it can lead on to stillbirth okay. and once the baby is born, the baby can be affected, uh, ha can have severe intellectual impairment okay. and um, developmental milestone delay. So uh, once the, um, you identify the woman to be a hypothyroid, you have to have treatment at the earliest. But one person of women usually are affected by hypothyroidism in pregnancy. Okay, uh, okay doctor, uh, there is another question here. Uh, do you uh, do a uh, regular thyroid screening during pregnancy? Usually. Uh, there is, uh, it is worldwide, the, it is said that there is no need to do a okay. uh, screening for hypothyroidism in pregnancy. But in, I think in, in India, uh, we usually have a, uh, more incidence of hypothyroidism than in the Western world. And we find more, identify more women with, uh, having problems with hypothyroidism. So we usually do it. Okay. We do the antenatal check. First trimester itself, we do it. Okay. I think uh, even the newborn period also, I think uh, yes. most of the doctors will go for a uh, newborn, yeah, yeah, newborn yeah, thyroid newborn screening. Thyroid. I think uh, <laughs> like that we can uh, rule out the hypothyroidism in uh, newborns yes, also. Yes, yes. Okay. Because it is a preventable cause of mental retardation oh, in right. young. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, so like uh, doctor, when you said about the hypothy hypothyroidism, yeah. uh, when they are diagnosed as a hypothyroidism patient, mm -hmm. do they have to take a regular treatment? During Definitely. Definitely. Because your thyroid hormone levels need to be under control. Okay. Because once it re uh, the baby reaches about 12 weeks, the baby's thyroid gland starts functioning and it, it can actually take care of the hormone levels. Okay. But during the initial phase, the first three months of development, but it's very important that adequate thyroid hormone supplementation is given to the baby. Okay. The that means we are treating two patients at a time. Yeah, definitely. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we'll uh, move on to the next question. Yeah. Hello ma'am, I'm Sharila doing my MCA. I have a doubt about cervical cancer. Uh, how common cervical cancer and is there any vaccine for cervical cancer? Uh, cervical cancer is uh, actually, it is actually preventable. Because we can identify cervical cancer at a very early stage by diagnostic tests like pap smear now. Okay. So uh, the most commonly the cervical cancer has got a bimodal peak that is it peaks at 30 years, 30 to okay. 40 and then again at 60 years. Okay. So it is very common cancer in India. In a developing country like India we don't have regular cervical screening test okay. for our women. So there is an increased incidence of cervical cancer in India. Okay. So, but in the young generation, I mean, below 25, I don't think there is a need for cervical screening okay. um, at all because the incidence is very, very low. Okay. And the most common cause of the cervical cancer is a virus that is a human papilloma virus, okay. and uh, which is uh, which can remain in the cervix for a long time and can induce cancerous changes in the tissue. 
which leads on to the formation of cervical cancer. It's rightly said that newer vaccines have been developed right now, the two types of vaccines. That okay. is one is the Cervarix vaccine, okay. which takes care of the HPV type um, 16 and 18, which is okay. the most common um, subtype which is causing the cervical cancer. Okay. And the other one is a Gadasil vaccine, which takes care of 16, 18 and other two uh, subtypes, which also takes care of the anogenital warts, which is okay. also associated with the human papilloma virus. Okay. So this uh, cervical cancer, yeah. how does it come? Is it only through the uh, sexual activity? Yes, mostly because uh, in young age group, there is a, definitely there is increased uh, chance of having a changing uh, partners, partners and things okay. like that, especially nowadays. So it has been proven to be uh, an important cause of uh, cervical cancer. Okay, HPV. Uh, so when uh, cervical cancer is diagnosed, yeah. or uh, before uh, going to the uh, diagnosis, like what are the symptoms of uh, cervical cancer? Yes, once you are having cervical cancer, the mo most common thing will be a postcoital bleeding okay. or an abnormal vaginal discharge. Postcoital bleeding uh, can be there due to other causes also, but main thing is the postcoital bleeding. And the other one is the abnormal discharge, that is blood stain discharge, offensive vaginal discharge. These are the things that are usually noticed. Oh, other that is, is, it, is it like immediately after uh, intercourse or uh, like otherwise also do you have immediately uh, after intercourse usually uh, okay. you get uh, the postcoital bleeding sometimes but okay. it's most commonly in the f after for 30 to 40 only this comes okay so in the younger generation i don't think they in the younger generation we need to uh, focus on preventing this in future so we have to vaccinate our young girls actually <laughs> okay right so we'll move on to the next question hi ma'am i am Fausia, uh, doing btec in kma uh -huh. i have a doubt uh, sometimes most of the girls do have painful periods mm -hmm. uh, is it right to take uh, painkillers for every month for this painful Thanks. periods okay i think okay. this is one of the commonest uh, problem yeah, yeah, that definitely. our uh, young girls are yeah. uh, this is also one facing, of the common yeah. problems dysmenorrhea as okay, we call right. it and uh, dysmenorrhea is of two types actually okay. you call it primary dysmenorrhea and a secondary dysmenorrhea primary dysmenorrhea is actually a very benign kind of a thing you don't have any problem you get your uh, pain during the first or second day of your period and it just goes away okay. secondary dysmenorrhea is usually associated with some kind of a problem with your underlying disease, yeah, yes, underlying okay. disease of the uterus and the ovaries or something like that and uh, so it needs to be diagnosed and treated at the earliest okay. so how will we know whether you are having primary dysmenorrhea or secondary mm -hmm. dysmenorrhea so if you're having painful periods, it means that you, ha you have to uh, have some kind of an analgesic, usually an NSAID, that's what we usually take. If you have pain anyway, you don't go to the doctor, you just go to, and to the pharmacy and get a dolo or some kind of an analgesic and you just pop in. Yeah, that's and you know, usually the pain subsides, okay. but you, you should not do it like, do like that. <laughs> uh, I'm not advising to go okay. to the pharmacist and taking things. That's, that's what a usual trend. Yeah, that's, that's a usual thing, trend. Right, yeah. But this uh, NSAIDs, which is the first line of management mm -hmm. for dysmenorrhea usually takes care of the primary dysmenorrhea okay. kind of a thing okay, okay. and so you there is no problem in uh, taking an NSAIDs that is the uh, analgesic drugs for the first one or two days that is you okay. take it six hourly or eight hourly depending upon the severity of your pain okay. so I don't think there is any problem uh, in taking uh, unless you are having gastritis uh -huh, okay right. having gastritis or there are more chances yeah, with yeah. NSAIDs okay, yeah. Yeah. but if you're taking the medicine for a so long time mm -hmm. then it causes problems because it reduces the prostaglandins and can cause renal impairment things like that okay so for one or two days that it's means not if you're taking it a stretch yeah, one or two days okay. it's not a problem. Okay, right, yeah. But in secondary dysmenorrhea case, the pain starts much before the periods. Okay. Even one week before the periods, the pain starts. And it will be a dragging kind of a pain. It, in, uh, it increases during the periods. And totally the pain will be there for one or two weeks. Uh -huh. And so the uh, girl would be really very, um, very much distressed again, because of the pain. And uh, in such cases, you need to consult a gynecologist to see whether there is any underlying pathology like most commonly endometriosis or pelvic inflammatory disease that is infection of the uterus or red neck okay. and you have to identify the problem and get the uh, appropriate treatment which is which okay. has to be given so a girl with a uh, dysmenorrhea yes so like uh, when do they have to go and meet a doctor yes if you know, if the woman if, if the girl is having pain painful periods and it's not getting relieved by taking an simple analgesics definitely she has to consult a i mean doctor my doubt is like uh, how many like uh, how many how many days like uh, how many months they can wait or like uh, on a regular basis Primary dysmenorrhea is very common. Okay. Uh, in uh, in girls who are not married, actually, it's very common. 
after once the ovulatory phase starts that is uh, after menarche for six months there won't be any dysmenorrhea and after six months once your ovaries start ovulating you get tend to get dysmenorrhea most of the girls tend to get dysmenorrhea and it's not a pathological problem it's very common and if okay. it's distressing you you can't uh, do your daily activities you can't go to school or college definitely you can take normal uh, i mean an analgesics that's not a problem but if it is getting relieved in one or two days then that is really uh, consecutively how, how many months you can take like for, with every uh, period yeah, every cycle you can take you can no take. problem you, you can take it in every each cycle uh to say it's a secondary uh dysmenorrhea it's not it will not get relieved by simple analgesics you oh, won't right. get relieved yeah, you right. may have to go to the hospital get injections you will have very severe pain which is oh, right. not relieved okay. by so other one is they will get relief with yeah, the analgesics right right okay doctor thank you now let's see what uh, this girl has to say hi ma'am i'm ashna okay. doing btech in kme engineering college mm -hmm. uh, i i heard that uh, so many uh, girls have irregular periods okay. let affect in future Life. This irregular period. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The question was about in irregular. Yes. Yeah, irregular yeah, irregular periods. periods. Right. Yes. Yeah. Irregular periods can be in frequent periods or it can be frequent periods. So what is the cutoff? Okay. Usually the cutoff is taken as twenty between twenty four and thirty eight. It's normal. Uh -huh. Okay. It's not twenty eight. It's not uh, cutoff is not directly twenty eight. Okay. And, right. mm, that's not like that. It's between twenty four and uh, thirty eight. And if you are getting periods one before twenty four, every twenty four days, you call it a frequent periods. So okay. Girl is right. having frequent periods. If it is uh, the if the girl is having periods only after thirty eight uh, thirty nine days, okay. Then you call it infrequent periods. Okay. Right. Okay. So in both, so both cases, these things are abnormal. Yeah. Both these things are abnormal, okay. and both these things needs to be taken care of. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the girl needs definitely investigations and mm -hmm. uh, treatment necessary to um, deal with the problem. So what are the reasons for this infrequent? Okay. I'll deal with the infrequent periods first. Infrequent periods because that is the most common thing okay. that we see. So the most common thing is the hormonal changes, mostly PCODs. You know, okay, PCOD, right, yeah. polycystic ovarian disease. It's most common and it's the most common thing. And there are other causes like hypothyroidism and uh -huh. sometimes hyperprolactinemia. That is, uh, prolactin level is very high. Thyroid hormone level low okay. and things like that. And girls who tend to exercise a lot, athletic girls, that is, who go for the sports event and things like that, okay. their hormone levels will be a little bit low, and they will also go get in infrequent periods okay. and things like that. Uh, what about this uh, low hemoglobin level? Will it affect uh, the periods? No, no, no. That is the uh, most uh, common question that the girls and the mothers ask. Uh -huh, that's right. That is uh, whether the low hemoglobin. Is it because of the low hemoglobin that my daughter is not menstruating regularly? It's not like that. Even with the hemoglobin of 14 or 13 you may not have regular periods it is not related to the uh, okay. what uh, the hemoglobin, hemoglobin level, level. Oh, okay yeah. so that means uh, these girls should get investigated thoroughly yes yes mostly uh, it will be due to some kind of an endocrinological problem that they will be having so that means uh, the underlying uh, disease we have to find out what what does it uh, yeah. cause actually in mostly in the young girls who are into modeling and uh, very uh, rigorous diet uh, regulations who tend to lose weight very fast yeah, okay. and girls who don't care about these kind of things and who tend to gain weight very fast on okay, right. the spectrum these two types of girls no they tend to have infrequent periods okay. even the lean ones as well as the overweight overweight ones. one okay that is about polycystic ovarian okay. uh, disease that was uh, that was a question and uh, just because you have your diagnose you are having an ultrasound scan report showing polycystic ovaries it doesn't mean that you are affected with polycystic ovarian disease lots of other features also need to be there okay. symptoms also need to be there to classify a girl as having polycystic ovarian disease okay the most common thing would be irregular periods or no periods at all Okay. okay that is the one point and the other one would be definitely the ultrasound feature showing cystic cyst means a water filled uh, thing is called a cyst okay. and the polys in polycystic disease this cyst will be numerous in number okay. than the normal ovaries okay, okay. In normal ovaries uh, the follicular number will be less than that of the polycystic ovaries okay. and these cysts will be uh, gathered or scattered around the periphery of the ovaries that is oh. the scan finding that we see in okay. uh, polycystic ovarian disease and the other thing is the hyperandrogenism features of hyperandrogenism facial excessive facial hair oh. excessive body hair acne oily skin and things like that or a
biochemical evidence that is a blood report that is showing high level of testosterone testosterone is definitely a male hormone but okay. it is also produced by the ovaries and if it is produced in excess from the ovaries, yeah, yeah that is that also uh, is a feature of polycystic ovary disease other than that these uh, girls they mostly they are obese girls and they will have some kind of a blackish discoloration over their neck area back uh -huh. part of the neck and as, as well as their um, okay, yeah, okay, axle. Okay. Okay. and that is called as acanthosis and that is also considered uh, as a feature of polycystic ovaries uh -huh. and uh, these girls will be mostly they will be depressed and they will have low self esteem because of these body features they are having and, okay. yeah, and um, they have a lot of hair fall okay. and because of the androgen uh, oh, yeah. a high yeah, androgen yeah, level high okay. androgen, hair loss and as well as acne and I told you facial hair and things like that so uh, what is the line of uh, management doctor the first and the most important line of management would be a lifestyle modification. Oh. What I mean by lifestyle modification is a healthy balanced diet along with exercise okay. which most of the young girls don't have because they are very busy with the studies, they want to prepare for the entrance and things like that, competitive exams and they don't have time for the daily routine. So okay. how can they go on having a exercise kind of a routine every day? Okay. But that is very important in case of a polycystic ovarian disease. You need to have take a healthy balanced diet. What I mean by healthy balanced diet is that you need to include lots of plenty of fruits and vegetables in your diet and you need to take whole wheat or um, whole um, rice that okay, is yeah. brown rice yeah, is very good rice, yeah. um, and um, cut down your carbohydrate le and increase oh. your, uh, the other the protein and okay uh, another doubt is that uh, doctor uh, can they conceive later yes will it be a problem yeah because in polycystic ovaries you as you know that is there is a difficulty in getting pregnant uh -huh. because there is difficulty in ovulating okay. so once ovulation occurs only there is a chance of getting pregnant so they since these girls they are having difficulty in ovulating they definitely will have a difficulty in getting pregnant so in future definitely okay. this can carry on if they don't do enough exercise and if they don't <laughs> eat properly okay. they can definitely go on to have infertility in okay. future uh, the most important long-term complication is diabetes mellitus and uh, okay. diabetes as you know is a condition where there is a difficulty of, of the body to control the sugar levels so these girls you know they will have a family history their pa parents or their uncles or relatives anybody will be having diabetes and um, okay. they are more prone to developing diabetes and during their pregnancy as well as in the later life and another complication is cardiovascular problems because uh, they tend to have high BP in later life and the diabetes along with the high BP can predispose them to cardiac problems in later life. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that is a long term complications mostly. Oh, yeah. and, and another thing is that there is an increased uh, susceptibility to cancer that is endometrial cancer. Uh -huh. If you are having uh, infrequent periods that is uh, less than 4 periods, 3 to 4 periods in one year, your endometrium that is the lining of your womb, lining okay. inside the womb which is shed regularly during the cyclical periods, it get, tends to get thickened, abnormally thickened and it tends to become cancerous and it can lead to endometrial cancer. Okay. So this type of patients, uh, do they have to be on a regular medicine or something like that? Uh, most important uh, treatment for these young girls is not medicine but lifestyle modification, okay. diet and exercise. But if they are very much worried about their infrequent periods, they are not getting periods once in every three months, yes they need to take some medicine so that their endometrium, that is the lining of the womb is protected from endometrial cancer. Okay. So we usually give progesterone for uh, we combine it with estrogen and give it as OZPs, oral contraceptive pills are usually given for cyclical control. Okay. There is an added advantage of giving oral contraceptives because the oral contraceptives will reduce the dysmenorrhea. If they are having painful periods, it will reduce the dysmenorrhea, okay. it will reduce the amount of bleeding, it will give good cyclical control, that is they will have withdrawal bleeding every month regularly. Okay. So that is the, usually that is the line of management. Okay. Uh, doctor, uh, we have a male. Yeah. Uh, I am a 21 year old girl. Yeah. Uh, I am doing my engineering. Mm -hmm. My periods are really heavy and sometimes okay. it persists for 8 to 9 days. Okay. Do I have to meet a doctor for this? This is very um, heavy menstrual bleeding is a subjective kind of a thing because you can't say who is having heavy periods and who is not having. She is saying in the mail that she is having a period of about 8 to 9 days yes, duration. Right. 
but the cutoff for prolonged periods is 8 days between 4 to 8 is perfectly normal okay and if it's more than 8 you call it a prolonged I mean prolonged periods so she's having a prolonged periods because she says it lasts for about 9 days and whether it's heavy or not it, because she's saying it's heavy we have to believe like it's a okay. subjective kind of a thing okay Be, because if it is affecting her day-to-day -day physical mental um, kind of a thing a daily routine is being affected by this heavy menstrual flow definitely she needs to get some kind of a treatment for this she needs to get investigated and then definitely treatment has to be taken for this so first thing i think she has to go and meet it yeah definitely she has to meet a kind of gynecologist okay so this was really an informative talk doctor thank you so much so if you have any health problems, write to us. Our email ID is youthdiaryroseball at gmail.com. See you next week. Till then, it's me Nita Ghosh.